got Jeff here again, and we got another chapter of this book about how to understand Americans. And I'm in a restaurant, got people behind me. I'm trying to hide them a little bit, so we don't have to worry about it. I'm trying to get the, the position. So I got my lighting here. It's kind of hard to get, so I don't show people. You can see the McDonald's Happy Meal behind there. So you know where I am, right? Yeah, I got I got some food I got to eat here a little bit later. So um, the next chapter I want to deal with here is about Americans and the and paying taxes. And this is a really interesting one because it actually interacts with everything else. There's so much involved. But I've already mentioned this in the in the one about military, in the international mili uh, policing, and in the policing one. I, actually, I, I already mentioned about the paying taxes part there, but I kind of want to deep dive into a little bit more here because I briefly mentioned there, and I wanted this is the chapter I want to talk about the roots of this and how this affects many of the things too because it touches on other topics too not just those. So the whole thing about paying taxes goes back to, and I'm gonna slightly restate this again, and I'm gonna deep dive. It goes back to King George in the, I keep saying King George, I'm pretty, I should actually look this up and make sure it's King George, I don't remember which one, but um, in the American Revolution, which happened in, you know, 1775, 76, so, um, against the king, the king, they can him the foreign king, but no, he's the king. He's the king. You know, this is just a colony at the time. And this is what, you know, the Americans declare their independence. Kind of like a lot of the territories did to the, a lot of the territories did to England, you know, <laughs> 300 years later, bam, you know, the 1960s, all these other countries in Africa and the Caribbean and elsewhere become the Commonwealth. Um, so... England had a couple hits, but the Americans were kind of the first to kind of say, say, there are other, there are other signs you can do to shoot that, but I'm not going to do it here in a video, okay? So you all know what I'm talking about. So the Americans kind of did their own, you know, early version of this. Um, and, and I remember for this, the joke is I have a lot of, I have British cousins and they kind of joke around and you guys all kind of, you know, decided to separate from us thing and stuff. And we all joke about it. We all, we all like joking about it. We do talk about it and we have fun with that. But, um, but the thing here is the Americans were against, one of the things that the Americans had against the king was paying taxes to the king. And, and this was a, a, a and, and I'm going to be careful here to say that not all the colonies, I have another chapter about where the different colonies came from and watch that one. Cause I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually display it in the other chapter about, I'm doing actually advertising of the different chapters and the chapters. Cause I want you to go watch the other chapters to understand some things that relate to. So I get, I'm doing, I'm doing inter book or intra book advertising. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not talking about other books. I am talking about other books too, but, um, but I have to actually talk about these, the other chapters, because they all relate. Um, and this is how it happens. But in the other ones, I'm going to talk about where the different colonies came from and for where the different reasons they came from, what countries they came from, because there were different reasons. And not all, not all of the uh, people that, be, that who in the colonies who became Americans came for the same reasons and came from the same countries. So we're going to have a feeling of that. And I'm going to give a bunch of anecdotes and the other, that one about, you know, I don't know what the chapters are going to be called yet, um, but it'll be something along the lines of, you know, the origins of the of the different the origins of the different um, colonies, or it might be about. Maybe I'll give a spoiler on it. I'll call it the the rebellious Americans. Okay, are the the rebellious? No, the rebellious immigrants. Maybe I should. No, they're not immigrants. I mean. The rebellious emigrants, <laughs> maybe I'll call it the rebellious emigrants. I don't know what the chapter is called yet, but I'm giving a spoiler by saying that, okay? Because um, that's kind of what it's going to be about. Um, but I don't know what the chapter is yet called. Uh, we'll find out what the chapter is. Maybe I'll have a slash in it to have the chapter have a title and a subtitle. I don't know yet, so I'm going to do that because I haven't done the video yet of that one. But I know what I'm going to say. Um, but this one is specifically about at least those that were finally under the king at a certain point in time in the 1770s after because you know you got to think about the the colonies act actually started as early as 1609 
Okay, so maybe 1607, Jamestown. I can't remember, 1607, 1609. Uh, give me a little break on the exact date. Uh, I think it's 1609 off the top of my head. I used to know these dates by heart when I was in 35 years ago in high school. I knew these dates by heart because I took an advanced placement history class and I knew them all by heart. But I, I got a pretty good memory. So for me, it's 1609. And I've been to Jamestown. I've actually visited there, but been there and uh, going on a family holiday or vacation. I'm sorry. I've got to use the American word for this, right? Lived in Europe too long to use the word a holiday. Um, but the, um, the Americans, or the, the, not the Americans, the colonies rebelled against the king to pay taxes for tea. So that was one of the points. And so what happened was they rebelled, threw all the tea off of the boats at the Boston Tea Party. So that's the reference to the Boston Tea Party. And if all you folks that don't, you know, non-Americans don't know in the politics and where they refer to the Tea Party and the boss, they came for the Boston Tea Party, it's this whole thing. So this is what it's pointing to, okay? Um, just to give you a reference. And so what happened is the America, the, not the Americans, they weren't Americans yet. They, they threw the, they, they went on the boats and they threw the tea off into the, into the bay and as a rebellion against the king of the colonies at the time, even though the people came from different countries, the colonies, but it was, it was considered at that point in time a, a British set of colonies. And, and so the, all those, uh, and so what they did is they were saying they didn't want to pay taxes to the king. And that led to the bloody American Revolution. And, and then as time went on, it was impossible to actually pay taxes. Now, maybe these are all, they, then they, they created this thing called a, a Federation of States, the United States, and there are different states. They didn't actually know how many states there would be. It was just like, all these are all little independent, you know, 13 colonies, but they had no idea how many colonies. They had no idea that they would grow this thing from 13 colonies, like you know, 1 million people, not even a million people, to like, what, 300 years later, you'd have 50 states. Well, 50 states plus, this should be a 51st, but they get, get, get voted in, right? Um, you have Guam too, but that's this territory. But uh, 300 million people, they had no idea this thing was grow exponentially. Expon exponentially. Okay, so this has grown out of what they thought it would be. And I, I really believe it. it just, it's grown exponentially. Maybe I should do another video about the growth patterns because I can look that up too at a certain point in time, actually in 2015, 16. Might be in my notes here in my computer disk. I haven't opened up. I haven't actually attached my computer disk to my notes on this book yet. I'm just doing all this by heart and within the brain up to this point, this many chapters already. I don't know what chapter I'm at right now, but I've done about five or six or seven of these videos already. Um, but the whole thing of paying taxes was a really interesting thing because Americans today don't want to pay taxes. Not many of them, because they don't want to have the government tell them what they have to pay the taxes for. And they actually want to actually just, they want to decide where they're going to put their money and they get to deduct the money as a tax deductible, tax deductible, tax deductible contribution. That's what America, and the Americans are actually very egotistic. Um, in this. They are not very collective. Um, they're against collective measures and collective decisions. Um, they're against all that um, because they want to decide and they want to say, hey, if my kids aren't in school. If I don't have, you know, when the kids are in school, they like to benefit from, you know, the free education, right? But when they don't have kids in the school anymore, they said, but I'm not accountable for this anymore. It's not my problem. That's the problem with the people that have kids. So that's why they so that's why they don't actually believe today in taxes because they only they only believe in taxes if it benefits them for their own interests at a certain point in time. Now I'm saying that I'm being very general of the gen I'm making a generalization here because that's not true of everyone. Okay, I'm not saying it's true of everyone. And I I think that the whole I think that the um this has been very um the whole period that 
Donald Trump came into 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 the presidency that kind of brought a it helped see who is who, you know, it really did. I think that um you know, we, Obama was a great because it helped to see what we thought of diversity inclusion. Okay. Donald Trump was to see who's on what side of what, <laughs> okay, really. Um, I think that's the, the greatest achievement of Trump is to show, really show us, um, well, he's got a couple of things, I'll bring him up again. Um, but he's really helped to see who is who and who believes what, because he's really brought it. He's, he is what we call fleshed out the wheat and the chaff. And I don't want to use the wheat and the chaff and that kind of said good or bad. I'm just saying he's made it clear who who has who is on what side of what. Okay. Um Trump who did a really great job of that. Um he actually made my book easier to tell <laughs> so much more. Because I like you said in the introduction, he just like I thought I didn't have to say anything about it more. Now I gotta say it because he's actually helped us show who believes what. Um and he can and it confused a lot of people too. So that helps do but and that's why this book is so much more important today than it was actually when i was writing what i think about writing because it's so much more important today um but the whole thing of paying the taxes was the americans don't want to be told who to pay the taxes to they want to be they, they i mean all comp all countries have had taxes for millennia i mean this is just like you pay your taxes israel had taxes back in biblical times you gotta pay the tax collector no one likes the tax collector. It was always that way. I mean, it's a biblical thing. Hey, Americans say that they're Christian or whatever. Well, tax collecting was in the Bible. That was, oh, wait, that was Old Testament times. That's the New Testament. When in fact, you know, pay, pay back to Caesar, give back to Caesar was Caesar's. I mean, we can, Americans will kind of joke around this and they'll try to make ways around it, deal work around it. And you can't. I mean, it's just, this is just the way it is. This is really interesting. Sorry about the backlight, but I got I'm trying to avoid seeing the people, so I gotta have uh, this this lighting here with the kind of the exposure, and I can't play with my I don't have I can't play with the settings on this this software right here. It's not really hard to do, so I got a little bit extra lighting. I'm sorry for that, but the the sun will probably go down in a little bit while, and we'll have we won't have that light that shining light through the window. I'm sorry, but it's 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 slightly shifting. Okay, that's what it is. But I don't have any extra, my software that I actually installed, the reinstall, I got a brand new computer, put the new, the new version of the software on it. Now I can't use that new version of software because it makes the videos too big and I get a, but there's a bug in it and I can't, it's not computer compatible with my computer. So I have to use a different editing, different, just one software that I have to just do the thing and I can't edit it afterwards. So that's the way it is. But that doesn't mean that we can't do the content here. Um, the important thing is to see my voice and that you can see my face. Um, with as much exposure as we can get here, okay? Um, you can see the you can see the LED lights actually bouncing off my head here. <laughs> Some blinding in several different ways. This is great. Um, but the whole thing of paying the taxes is something that is haunting America today because all the countries pay taxes. They have no they pay taxes to have their community services, to have the public services, to have transport, to have all this thing, to have all these to have the police, to have the fire the the, the fire uh the firemen or the firefighters, uh, we call those now. Um so I'm trying to think of these words. I no. I have lived in France since of this whole you know, diversity inclusion the whole thing and the whole thing. I you know, I have I'm still using words that I learned when I was a kid, and so I can't not supposed to say that anymore. You can't say firemen anymore because they're men, right? So you got to say firefighters. <laughs> so, you know, I have I'm using words that are from my childhood and from my young adulthood, and so I haven't been formatted to think them differently in because I don't live in I haven't lived in the United States for 30 years. So, well, I did not for four or five years, and I go back once in a while. So I, but I do speak in English all the time. But I'm speaking with usually non non-americans or those who have lived overseas like me for a long time so that's kind of it so so these words will come up i'm sorry if they're if i'm not being always politically correct because i'm having to kind of think about what these are as i'm talking because that's what it is um some change some words meanings change as time goes on i'm sorry Oop, no. um so i get idea with those as i go but the whole thing of paying taxes is this affects a lot of things and so other countries believe in you pay taxes for school public education for for the emergency services, for the you know, for certain types of things like that, for um, first response, for uh, for you know the whole um, medical folks like what do we call those folks? Et something I can't remember. Um, 
uh, emergency something something. Um, I can't remember what it is. I'm sorry. Um, but you know the the paramedics, the paramedics basically, and then the firefighters, the police, the paramedics, um, and and for you know hospital thing is a whole nother thing. Uh, the, the actually in other countries is actually you know nearly free. In America, it's you got to have insurance to actually get the hospital. So this kind of comes into it too. <clears throat> all these things come into all these services things come to. Should the government pay or not? Or should people pay it and decide who the service provider? Say so, yeah, this is this is this comes into it. It covers a lot of different things. And so what you'll see is uh, Americans don't want to do it the way the communists do it, right? Wait, don't everybody's communist. I mean, but Americans see that they're communists. Americans perceive anyone as anyone. Again, we're getting this, this, that we're getting this plus or minus thing, right? So one thing that we're going to get a couple, we're going to we're going to get a couple of plus or minus things here, this, these value things. So we got a little bit of people coming in right now. They're, they're coming in to make their, they got to put their COVID pass, passport in here right now. So they're going to get stuck here and they're talking loud but hey that's no big deal um so there's a one thing or not should americans pay taxes or not okay so it's pay taxes or not that's the one thing then there's there's a whole nother there's some well, I, sorry, 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 I got people yelling here they're, they're too loud that's okay they're trying to figure that they they're gonna go away so um get or moved on here uh the machine for passing the COVID thing doesn't work here, so got to go. They're going to do it up there. Um, but the, the so there's that should pay taxes or not? Don't pay tax. It's actually about don't paying taxes. It's not about should we do it. It's just don't pay taxes. It's it's either you're it's you're pro American by not paying taxes, okay? Which is kind of a negative action. So it's kind of a weird one because you're using the negative one is actually the pot is actually the important one, not the positive one, okay? So not pay taxes is the positive trait. <laughs> Isn't this weird? This is really weird. This is kind of where it's kind of funny. We get begin to get into kind of a, the aligning these things it gets really funny. So so not paying taxes is the positive trait. If you pay taxes, you're actually the negative trait. If you want to pay taxes, you're negative trait because you are communist. <laughs> okay. Whereas that's not kind of, well, what communism is kind of one, I don't want to say one extreme, but one side of the spectrum. It is one, one type of governmental structure, but not everybody's communist. If they do have the belief in collectivism and to pay, um, you know, for people to pay People able to pay taxes to be able to, but not everybody's in the communist thing where everybody gets the same salary, and everybody gets the same thing, and you have no say in whatever. Um, not everybody has that. That's that's slightly a different thing, okay? Um, and not American Americans, you know, think that socialism and socialistic governments. And I'm kind of being careful that using that because it's it's kind of I can say that but it's not you know, they're all kind of they're all kind of capitalistic a lot of them are capitalistic in the search history point but they've got a lot of socialism traits to it um so that's kind of the way it is we've got people coming here with the balloons and stuff so I'm sorry I gotta kind of hide these faces so they come here okay, I have to worry about it here um the um they're not wanting to you know, and so there's a whole thing of so and I might have to have a separate video just on that one because that's enough about politics and political parties. I'll have to make a whole other one about that because that's that's just a whole other thing. Um, but the, the so they don't want to pay taxes. Americans don't want to pay taxes, taxes on what other people pay taxes for. So this covers a lot of different topics here. And what it covers is, is education, public education, which is usually elementary school, junior high school or middle school, high school, and then the whole question is whether or not university education, can, we can call these community colleges and actually four-year colleges, should that be free or not? Free, It should it, be sub, should it be significantly subsidized or not? Let's say it that way. Because Americans get into this free education, it's gotta be free, should it be free or not? Well, another company, uh, it's not always free 100%. It's, you know, you pay, you pay less, you pay way less. But the problem is in America, 
what happens is in the United States is that it's become so privatized that the cost of it is just exponential. So, um, so the the paying taxes. Like I remember going to my going to my first my first university degrees. Okay, I went to a private a small private college. About six my first my first degree. I went to a small private college. It was a specialized college, number three in its field in general. Um, so it's pretty well known, um, but small. So so it cost a bit. Um, but I remember back in the 19, mid 1980s, it was costing me $6,000 of just tuition for the year. $6,000 for tuition for the year only for a night, for a, a small college of 600 people. Of 600, uh, yeah, 600 people. Off the top of my head, it was 600. It wasn't 600 graduating per year, it was 600, 600 students. And today, so that was the first college I went to. You can call that one of my alma mater. I got several of them actually because alma mater you can actually have several of them but it means a previous college previous university but the first one was that private college called Multnomah University Multnomah University yeah. and so today that same college 30 years later literally 30 years later uh, costs uh, Thirty thousand dollars, not six, but thirty thousand dollars. That's how much the the inflation and everything's taken it, and it's actually not actually any bigger. It's about the same size, so it hasn't grown significantly. But that's the cost of it. Now, the university that I went to, the public university in Portland State University, which I attended there, it each semester there, um, I think each semester, each quarter, it was a quarter system, where it's Multnomah was a semester system. So Multnomah cost me $6,000 off the top of my head for the entire year. So it's like $3,000 a semester for tuition. Whereas Portland State University, um, which I did both, I'm, I can't remember what the graduate education cost. I can't remember what the actual the undergraduate probably cost less. But I'm going to say the undergraduate, I think the, the graduate education what I did the next year, because I did two years. I first did a year of undergraduate studies, and then I did a year of graduate studies. And it's actually a different price. But the graduate school, which is more a little more expensive, was $500 per quarter. So $500 per quarter. For graduate studies, cost me one thousand five hundred per year, whereas my private college undergrad and the private one cost me six thousand dollars for the entire year. So that you can see the difference here, and and I'm not even comparing what the graduate courses cost for Multnomah, and I'm not saying what the undergraduate courses cost for Portland State because I would have to actually look it up. I can't remember, but I can remember what my last what I last paid at Portland State was, was about 500 a semester because I did my graduate studies there at last. And it was back 30 years ago, so, you know, kind of good. But today, the Portland State, it's, it's, it's expensive too. It's like, in the, I think I recall seeing it somewhere, it's like in the, between the 20 and $25,000. So it's going expensive. It's just crazy expensive, right? Because you got bigger stadiums. You got a bigger stadium. You got a lot more buildings to support. You got all that kind of stuff. All the sports fees and everything. You got to pay for all this stuff. So it costs even, that's why it's, it's grown even more than actually the inflation than of the private college because they got a lot more stuff you got to support, which is hidden too. And I should actually do a separate video just about the education part because this is, I start digging deep in other things. Maybe I should say here. So education, why is that education expensive? And Americans don't want to be, it's partially subsidized, but you're only subsidized usually by, if you get a merit scholarship, a merit scholarship, you're good, you got good grades, you got to do that, and you get a merit scholarship, which allows you to be recognized for your awards. I missed that by, I think, a two weeks, and I, so I missed a full, a, a half tuition scholarship in Multnomah for three years because of that. So I had to pay for it myself, and I had to make the money myself, okay, so, and I did. Um, but... And then when I got to Portland State, I said, this is so cheap, I don't need to worry. I don't care about the scholarships. I, I didn't need a bet because I didn't need it for the first year. But then when I went to my second year, it's like I did my bachelor's degree and it still didn't cost me that. It wasn't too much. That didn't bother me. And then my master's like free because I did, I had to teach because they sent me on a fellowship and they brought me back and I, and they just gave me free tuition. They paid me to actually teach. So it didn't matter anymore. So I have no idea what it costs anymore because I, because it was free for me. 
Um, now you'd have to pay taxes on the same stuff. So then I know, because I'd be paying taxes on the stuff that'd be waived tuition. But that's a thing. That's a whole other topic too, which it's not because <laughs> it's all related, right? Um, but this whole, so education is a very contentious thing. Should it be free or not? Health, should it be free or not? Should universal health be something that Americans have or not? In other countries, you know, but see, Americans see this as free, but they're not seeing that the taxes are actually paying it. And actually the health in France and other places, it's not that it's free, it's that you pay according to how much money you have. So how much revenue you pay or how much revenue you earn determines how many taxes you pay so that it determines how much you actually pay into the social security medical thing. So all this is kind of like, it's a pro rata kind of thing, at least for France. Whereas Americans see this as, oh, you're getting it for free. You free riders, which is not free riding. And I'll say that actually when I came to France as a student um, and I worked at the university, uh, well, I, worked, I actually was a student, but I actually worked as well. But I actually got a sub, I actually got a, I actually got subsidized from the, from the social security system. I might think it's social security system as a student, even though I was working. But maybe because I was working at a, as a university job, it didn't pay me every month. It paid me every year, once a year. So they didn't see me as being a student. They saw me as, well, they saw me as a student, not being a person working because I was only getting paid once a year, maybe twice the most. So I wasn't, I wasn't paying into the system every month. So they didn't see it that, um, but they, the whole thing, of, I, they would actually give me money to be a student. And I said, I don't want it, but I could not, I could not not accept it. I had to accept it because that's the way it is. So you get, you get it because you're a student and you get a certain amount, but they did, they did based on how much money I was making, how, or they do it on how much other students are not making. Okay. So that's what it comes down to. So I was making, I was receiving less than other students because I was making at least some money. Other students were getting nothing. So they're just studying. So they get more money and you get subsidized more and more, but I could not just say, no, I don't want it because they would not understand that. And I didn't want it. I didn't need it because I was working. So, um, so something comes into play. Um, and you can see that the, uh, the exponential growth of the cost of inflation with that. The whole thing met health and the whole thing of back, I remember going back to the United States and the whole thing of, you know, health, the whole, you know, HMOs and all that and coming, starting up and all that rather than private stuff and whether you get you get health coverage or not and so like in france it's just a no-brainer anybody that is on the street can go in and at least be covered to be able to go see a doctor or get surgery or whatever in the states i have lived through this situation my wife the time back in the 1990s we went to the States and we actually had to go to the emergency room for her because we were, we had moved back to the, we had moved to the States. We were students. We didn't have health coverage yet because we we're in transition to go transition to go and get to where the university, where I would be teaching and maybe be enrolled in a PhD. And, and we were in the transition getting there. So we weren't quite covered yet. Uh, and I had not thought about this. Well, I had probably thought about it, but I didn't have it because we were, we quit our jobs to go do this, right? So we both had jobs. We quit our jobs to go do this, to move to America. The American dream kind of thing, right? which is crazy. Yeah, we did it. But it cost us a bit too, because during that two weeks, the two to three weeks where we are on visiting my family and all that stuff, we had to go to the emergency room for her. And luckily my dad works at the hospital. He works at the hospital. He's a med tech. So he took all the, the blood and urine samples, a lot of kinds of stuff were needed. So that was free. He just did that for free. Um, but but if we had not that we came out with that emergency room bill with an $800, 1995, four, 1994, $800 bill to go to the emergency room, okay? Because we didn't have health insurance. You imagine that? That's just like nuts. I mean, it's just like, and we actually were students. So we're going to students. I had to pay, make pay, I had to make three payments of this for like, it, it costs a lot of money for us of my salary I got in the, what's on the next month to actually do this. It was like crazy making payments on the medical bill, okay, as a student. And I remember too, when we were in Indiana University there and, you know, they only had the medical, they only had the medical um, center open during the week. And so my wife had to 
So you had to go see a doctor on the weekend. So we had to go to one of these little clinics, right? That aren't covered by the that aren't covered by the by the the university medical system. And this was again nineteen ninety four. And just going to see a doctor who wanted to come come in and out. You know, you want to come in quick and leave out and stuff, um, fifty bucks, fifty dollars just to see him for something, a cold or whatever. And I remember telling him, and he didn't want to be patient to actually to have me translate from French to English with him. And he was, the nurse and he were kind of not nice. And so he started reaching for the right. He said, doctor, take your hand off the door because you're not the only doctor in the room. Whoa. Yeah, get your hand off the door handle because this doctor is translating for his wife talk to you so you're going to sit here and wait until we finish the translation because this is a medical necessary thing and i'm being an interpreter right now whoa yeah i had to scare him with that one scare him big time so 50 bucks for that visit 50 dollars for a visit in 1994. now how much does it cost if you don't do it okay see 200 bucks i've heard you know i don't I, know i mean if you're not insured you're just like screwed but I guess there are other things too, and I don't. I don't live there anymore. But I hear, and I know a lot of friend, uh, friends and colleagues, and old former peers and stuff that have been kind of, you know, they don't have private medical, they don't have medical insurance. So they to get things to, you know, you're, you're kind of, yeah, it's super expensive too. Whereas like France here, I pay for it through my, I pay for it through my payment for my salary. I don't know how many percentages, but my employer pays for it too. And so there's a percentage in there. And that's why taxes are expensive because taxes are 25% of taxes for me and my employer pays 50% taxes on top for me. That pays for all my medical insurance. And I have to have supplemental medical insurance, which costs me that supplement medical insurance to get the, the, the dental fees and the, the ophthalmologist and the, you know, the, the optometristries and all that. It's like, I don't know, $40, 40 euros a month, 40 bucks a month. I mean, it's just nothing. It's just nothing. It's just no big deal. So, um, so it's really cheap compared to the States. It's like $1,500 per month. Okay. And I do remember actually working in the States where I had to have, I'm telling all these things that, that the tax, because this is all the fees that, that come into play. And this all this is all part of the paying the taxes or not, or not paying the taxes and whether you should pay taxes or not for certain fees for certain services, right? So this is, I'm telling a story of this to kind of make us a feel to help the non, non-Americans non understand why, why you got to pay taxes or what the taxes are, what's paying and not paying, because it's all kind of involved. And I do remember when I was in Carnegie Mellon University, I was hiring people and I had to hire people part-timers. So they were not eligible to have jobs for to have medical insurance during your first quarter semester. And then when they're finally eligible, then we do it. And it was, it was, it was costly for them and they had to actually pay for it. And so they need to get raises to actually be paid for it. Um, so I remember having to give them raises just so they could actually afford the medical insurance. And then they would actually get the medical insurance. That's a whole nother story, but, but that is, I mean, the problem is that you're, you're given the thing, you give some credits to pay for it and stuff. And then people don't take it. They do it in other things like put into retirement stuff, which like, if you're not sick, you don't worry about it and stuff. I mean, this is a whole people, people in the States, they don't use the money for things that are actually necessary that you should be using it. Well, that other social States think that you should actually get this and you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice You get medical insurance. You're always covered. And so you get to cover that by standard. Whereas in America, what they do is they, you come in and you come to the job and they say, here are all the different things, these different things you can do. And you can choose where you want to put your credits to actually get it. So it could be pre-tax med medicine, or it could be retirement or funds, or it could be, you can go to optometry or no, no, the eye doctor for the, for the doc, the dental doctor, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and for other, or for other types of topics. And so what you do, you have these credits. And you choose where you want to put the credits, but you get to put it all into, I want to go all this money to all this funding to actually go into my retirement fund. Well, if you're young, that's fine. If you're not sick, you don't have kids. But what happens when you're older and you have to start having kids and stuff and they just need to go to the doctors? I mean, that's, you got to make decisions on this. So you get to make decisions in America, but you don't make them in other countries. Because they're like, you got to have, see, so in America, it's all, it's all like it. It's like going to a restaurant and choosing what your lunch is, okay? It's like going down and going to the menu and saying, here, I'm at a pizza place or I'm at McDonald's on a kiosk and I'm choosing what I want to pay for. That's how, that's just how the medical system is actually built, or the, not the whole medical, the entire thing of paying taxes and what you 
what your taxes pay, what the services you get for your taxes are of your salary. You decide what those taxes are going to go for and what you actually get from it for your, for, from your employer. And the problem is when you, you change employers, you complain, completely change everything and you move to another medical system. You gotta, you're under a different employer and you're not going, it's not all going to one different system. It's going to a different separate system. So each employee change employers, you, you go through this process and you go through this decision process of where you want the credits of the money to actually go to reimburse or pay for parts of certain public services that are usually covered in your just standard being a salary person in another country. So um, so this is important for the non-Americans to understand this because this is how it works. Some of the countries are receiving that now for their supplemental health insurance. And some of the, you gotta pay for the supplementary health insurance. You gotta choose your things you want and which one you want. I know in France that we've got that, it, the supplementary one is like that, but not for the basic stuff. But see, it's all kind of, this whole privatization thing is impacting the whole thing and all that. So. So that's what I want you to kind of feel through this is, and of course I haven't worked in the States for you know, a while. Um, and I do have you know, lots of friends and colleagues that still do. So they kind of tell me how it is still. And so it's, it's, it's still kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's up to date. It is what it is. But um, so that's the kind of thing I want to you know, mention about the whole, you know, um, taxes, not to paying taxes, what it is, because it's all, and again, it comes back down to is not paying taxes is the default positive value and deciding to want to pay taxes and willing to pay taxes is the negative part of the value of the, the binary thing. Really weird. I mean, it's, you gotta have to think backward to understand this because other countries say, why it should, you just, you get, you get, you get the services because you're paying taxes because of your employer stuff. It's a backward, it's a, it's a reverse thinking. I don't want to say backward thinking. It's just, you got to think backward. You got to think backward, but it's a reverse thinking and you got to put yourself in that mindset. So that's why it's really important for non-Americans to understand this, especially if they're going to America and living there. Um, I could say my family would probably knew we'd ever, we'd never move back to America. So I, I wouldn't want to put the family through that kind of thing, anything again, because, um, I mean, yeah, it, it's just not, it wouldn't be, it'd be a hassle. And I think it would be something that would be culturally difficult to, culturally difficult, it would have been culturally difficult to do that, that whole thing again, that whole thing, and decide to do that. And, and it's a value, it's a whole value system. It's a whole underlying value system, which I think would, um, which is different and a lot of, and, for European cultures to want to accept it, you got to have to be kind of daring to want to go out of your, get out of your zone of comfort and do this. Um, and so when you're, you know, when you're married or whatever into other cultures, you're kind of in that box, you know, you're, you're not 100% of what you grew up to be, but you're, you know, it's, it's all kind of complex. So, but I'm, that's what I'm sharing here. And this, uh, these, um, these little, um, these little, um, yeah, clips of the chapters, of the book about, understanding in America and Americans, because yes, we are different animals. Sometimes you say different beasts, but yes, we are different animals when it comes to paying taxes. We're not paying taxes. It's just hard to understand how we tick, how we tick. And ticking means how we function, you know, how we are, how we work, um, how we tick in our brains. And I've realized that <laughs> living in Europe for so long. Um, and having lots of friends in Asia and Africa and stuff too, and tell me how they works there. It's just, it's always ever, ever different, but the American culture of the whole capitalistic thing. And I'll, I'll end with this last quote here for, of an idea here that um, came out for the whole tax thing. I remember I being on Facebook um, about seven, eight years ago. And the whole thing up came up of, at one point I was going to bring up, I want to bring up a statement one time. I want to be kind of provocative at one point in time, about seven, eight, nine years ago. I'm not sure the exact date, but I want to say that I actually should have kept a quote. I should have picked a, a screenshot of that quote that I saw, but I wanted to say that Americans believe that education and health are commodities 
And this came actually from, I saw this from, I'm going to cite, I'm going to cite Mark Homnack from this, from Simul Trans, because he said that we need to be careful in, at least in the translation industry, because that's what I was working in for a while, keep coming in and out. But he kept talking about the commoditization of services in the translation, in the language translation industry. And so I used, I thought about that whole thing. And I transferred over that Americans, uh, they, they consider, because commoditization means you pay for the service you want and all that, and you pay for the fee, and you determine the fee is, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole supply and demand kind of thing. But I said that at one point in time, because if you can see that universities and all stuff and all, and it's all, it's all, Americans want to decide where they go, and which, and then we're going to, we're going to pay for their fees and stuff, and who, who they're going to go to. And I said at one point in time, I wanted to say on a Facebook uh, post one time that Americans see, this is my statement here. This is my key statement here at the end of this chapter. The Americans see health and education, at least. Okay, And we could say this to transport, public transport and other things too. I mean, it's all, they see this as a pay-as-you-go and a commodity, a commodity. They see health and education as a commodity, whereas other countries see that as a necessity. Americans see it as a commodity. You pay for it, you decide, but you decide whose provider you're going to do and who's going to be the cheapest or for what you get, what value you get out of it. Where other countries see this as a necessity, an obligation to have, and then you get what you get because someone, you know, someone's decided for you. And I actually did not say to say this because I had a former colleague actually say this on Facebook. He said that he actually wrote there on Facebook one day, education and education and health are commodities. Now he had money. He was a good salesperson, made a lot of money, so I had to worry about it. But a lot of people don't have money. And I'm not gonna say the person's name. But this whole thing is this is just like at least Europeans cannot conceive this. They have a very difficult time conceiving this, and so do others. They just understand how you can believe that this can be a, just based on a capitalist system. You pay as you want, you pay the cheapest fee, and you decide, and and all the others just like die, because it's their problem if they don't get it. You know, if they don't, they don't earn enough money to pay for the commodity, then that's their problem. A lot of Americans just see it that hey, it's a commodity. You, you work hard. We work hard. You just work hard, make money, and then you'll be able to pay for it. Americans see this. That is the American work ethic. American worth ethic is coming. I might actually get into the American worth ethic, worth ethic as another chapter, because this is another important one. So each of these chapters is opening up another chapter, point to another chapter somewhere. I've got to do the advertising. I mean, it's not advertising. I'm helping myself remember actually what chapters I need to work on next, because this is great. But this is kind of a complex thing. It's a very intertwined thing. I, and I, these are why, that's why these videos, each of these take a little bit of time to explain all these different anecdotes to kind of get the dot. You got to connect all the dots of all these things, of all these different topics together, because that's how it works. Um, and it's kind of a neural matrix, <laughs> okay? Um, yeah, it's a neural matrix uh, to, to understand this. Um, I'm hopefully demystifying it. Um, I'm having a fun time doing it. I hope that you're having, you know, at least a half fun time listening to it, and at least you're gaining something in there and, 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 and something from this. Um, and I hope my kids can watch this and understand a little bit more about American Americans too. And so that's that's the least if they can do it. That's enough. Now I got to convince them to do it. Hey. They keep telling me that, that every time I put videos on YouTube, they get notifications, they get a thing, and not even subscribe to my channels. That tells you how good my channels work. <laughs> so, great. So, have a good day. Go to the next chapter. And I think one of the ones, I got some other ones here I got to talk about worth ethic. I got to talk about transportation. Um, a couple of these other chapters I got to work on. Thanks so much.